Welcome to Outside the Box. I'm Terry O'Quinn. I'm here with some of my co-stars from Lost, Michael Emerson, Daniel Day Kim, Emily DeRaven. And we're going to ask each other some questions that you've submitted and some questions that are outside the box. <laughs> Emily, what was it like returning to Lost after a whole year of working on other projects? It was, uh, felt like a really long time away, but when I came back, it was kind of like I never left, in a good way. Felt like a long time to us, <laughs> didn't it? Michael, uh, quite a few fans find you the most attractive cast member on Lost. Is this news to you? Have you gotten any love letters from fans? I'm past my matinee idol days, I think. Well, if someone finds me appealing, uh, more power to them, but it, I'm, I think I would question their aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> You're just coming into your matinee idol. Right? <laughs> exactly. Right. Maybe, exactly. I'm, maybe I'm just arriving yeah, now, so right. at, at a kind of eccentric sex right. symbolness. <laughs> Which of the lost mysteries are you most anxious to have answered? Actually, I think the one I'm most interested in uh, having answered is the biggest question, I think. Uh, why us? You know, what, what was it about us that brought us here and uh, at this particular time? That's interesting, isn't it? Because we've, we've answered that question a hundred times. Many times today, but I, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, why? Why this set of people? Mm -hmm. But that would also be part of, or a sub-answer of the big answer of what was it all about? What was the island? What, uh, what is this other reality that seems to exist beneath the surface reality? Yes, but you see, I'm narcissistic, so I only care about us. <laughs> <laughs> you, more specifically, why Daniel? Yes, why me? Why me? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, Layla in Orlando, Florida would like to know Terry. What was your first reaction when you discovered that Locke was really dead? Is he really dead, Leila? Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> if, if, we, if we accept that he's really dead, it didn't hit me in a moment. It actually gradually, I, uh, at the end of season five, I gradually realized that the person I'd been playing was gone, that I wasn't going to be playing this person anymore. I was going to be playing someone else. And it was, it, it's funny, you would think when you roll somebody out of the coffin, that the, that the reality would hit you, well, he's dead. But uh, it took me a while. Well, it's given, that, given that this is lost and he's killed me a couple of times and, you know, it's, you, you know, dead is, apparently dead is dead. Uh, but it took a little while for me to realize that, that, and then I got a little wistful. I thought, <laughs> oh, John Locke is gone. Worst job you ever had before you made it big. Well, this presupposes that we made it big. Uh, that's what I, that was yeah. my that's question. That's true, yeah. You made it big? <laughs> I question the premise. <laughs> <laughs> what does that exactly entail yeah. to making it big? My worst job wasn't, hmm. a, wasn't in, there, there were worse jobs, bad jobs in acting, but I think my, wor my worst job before that was working at the lumber yard when I was in high school, stacking raw green timber, so we don't have to even, and roofing houses. Hmm. I count my blessings every day. There you go. Every day. I worked for a time at a landscape nursery in Florida at a shockingly advanced age, I might add, and it was the most dangerous work I ever did on account of um, uh, water moccasins coming up out of the creeks and sunning <laughs> themselves on the black plastic sheets that were laid between the pots of plants. Great. I, I also got bitten very badly by red ants one time when mm. I was weeding plants and I passed out under a tree for the rest of the day. What's the strangest question you've ever been asked in an interview? Season one, when um, Maggie Grace was on the show, and um, sort of halfway through the interview, the question started to be like, so what do you like about Shannon? And I just realized that the first five minutes they had confused us completely and basically everything was <laughs> geared towards Maggie, not me. So that was quite funny, and I think the question was something about, you know, were you comfortable in your bathing suit on the beach? I'm like, what? I remember shooting that. You should have just answered it. <laughs> yeah, you should have just gone with it. But that was quite amusing, actually. The whole interview, they thought I was... That's good. Maggie. What do you like, Michael, most and least about Ben? About the character I play? Yes. I, I like so many things about him. I like that he has a sense of humor, that he doesn't lose his head, in an emergency, that he stays focused, 
a good listener, well-read, he can talk to anyone. Is there, like there anything you dislike about him? <laughs> yeah. It's like, like he's a harmony profile yeah. right here. <laughs> no, it, when you play a character, do you think, what do I dislike about this person? He's socially awkward. He's childish. He is hopeless with women. And he's sometimes brutally violent. <laughs> but other than that... I can attest to that. He's a pet. Daniel. What's the funniest thing that has ever happened behind the scenes? Wow, that's a really good question. I, I, I would put it to all of you because I'm sure... I only heard about some idiot swinging on a vine. <laughs> <laughs> this was just maybe a few weeks ago, actually. It was a night shoot and we were up in the jungle and you know we have all these vines hanging down from the trees and I was like cautiously like testing to see like whether it would hold my weight. And sure enough, I kind of jumped up on it a little bit and hung there and it was fine. So then I hung there a little bit longer the second time and the third time I thought, you know what? This, this vine is plenty strong. I'm going to go swing on it. So I got to go <laughs> grab the vine. I take a running start and I go whoop, up into the air and just as I'm peeking into the air, the vine snaps flat on my back onto the ground. <laughs> And it's, Oof. I think, and, and they're shooting like 50 yards away. Oh, man. And people were doubling over laughing. <laughs> so I would hard. pay to see that. Meanwhile, I was in pain, but I was so embarrassed that I couldn't let anyone, you know, know <laughs> how, how hurt I was. But I was like, <laughs> okay. no, I'm fine. No, I'm good. I'm good, really. <laughs> you can't walk, right. but I'm okay. <laughs> First time you ever got recognized. Well, I'm doing this so long that I often got recognized in, in Home Depot. <laughs> and, people, <laughs> and people would say, do you go to, do you play tennis at the, my club some? Well, how, well, how do I know you? That was as far as recognition went. And then, it, and then sometime after Lost started, it was funny because we were all here shooting, right? And I, didn't, I don't think anything happened until I went back to the mainland. I came back to L.A., or I came to L.A. because I live in the East. And somebody said something then about Lost and about John Locke, and that was when I realized, oh, now I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm actually somebody. I'm not... Are you that guy? I saw you in, I can't remember what, you know. Now it's John Locke. That was, pretty, that was pretty interesting. Which moment shocked you the most when you first read it in the script? Probably um, Charlie's death. Oh. Even though, you know, we knew sort of, you know, before, not long before, but just really realizing that because I, I'd worked with Dom so much and it's just odd having that relationship cut and just really sad too. More than Boone's death, when you read Boone's death in the script? Well, for my character, I guess. Sure. But, yeah, no, I didn't care about that at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, just, I guess, because of their relationship really sort of hit home a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, there was a little foreshadowing. You're going to die, Charlie. Just a little You're bit. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, in speaking to Frank from Shreveport, uh, this question came up. <laughs> You, you had conversations with Frank? <laughs> you don't know Frank. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm afraid Frank. I don't know. I've known Frank for years. Pleasure. Frank is a religious a fan of the show. Mm. What are your favorite things to do together when the cameras aren't rolling? Well, I can tell you that one of the things that we've done many times that uh, I look back on very fondly and I hope we'll be doing again very soon is when Terry and Naveen and sometimes Josh... Uh, bring their guitars, and the cast will sit around a banyan tree uh, in our chairs and just sing and play in between takes. And mm -hmm. to me, that's as much fun, if not more fun, than you know, going to work. Yeah, it's that's, pretty great. It's that's cool that's, that that's a part <clears throat> of work too. That's it's what great. I remember. That's one of the things I remember. One of the strongest images is that those, those days, man. Those beautiful days. Mm -hmm. Well, um, thank you, Michael, Terry. Dan. And thank you guys for watching and sending in your questions and please be sure to watch Lost on ABC.